What do you think of Patty Pimblet? I think he's a fighter, but a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> well, the UFC does whatever the fuck they want. <laughs>
Well, there was there was another fight on the card, uh, Nurselton versus uh, Dumas. That was a different referee. So, but but it was the same concept, right? For I think it was a round one. Nurselton clips him in the eye, but then Dumas goes down, and then he just gets the ground and pound. Did you see that one? I saw that. What did I you saw think that. of that one? Because it's very it's very similar. It was a very weird card. I with think all was these. Yeah. was worse than Chris Weidman, to be honest. Yeah. Because because on the Chris Weidman fight, they. They did that like they had the eye poke like two or three times. I don't know. It was like kind of yeah. And, and I think in the other on the other fight when he poked in the eye, the guy was was like defending himself. And the other guy went and knocked him out. So the the problem is, I think they 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 look to the screen and they say, hey, he poked on the eye. But what can we do? He, we cannot put them to fight again, you know. They, yeah. We cannot put the fight back. So it's a strange situation. I, I wish people got like the referees give more points deduction. I agree, hundred percent. Right? Like, you're, you're, I mean, with respect to Wadman, it's like if you're if you're doing this the whole time. I agree with you, man. There has to be more stakes. Whether it's grabbing the fence, see guys all day grab. What is? How many times is that how the sport works? Where the official just takes the arm up? No, yeah. you yeah. grab the fence. Yeah. I hear you. If you grab the fence for the second time, I feel like you have to cuz like we all know in MMA like if you use that fence grab and it doesn't go to the ground, that changes the whole outcome of the fight. No doubt. And the fact that they don't take a point is kind of crazy there, honestly. Yeah. But to- since we're talking about Chris Weidman, I have something to say. <laughs> I was very surprised the way he was I don't know what you guys think about that because when I look at him, I thought he was kind of limping. Right? Yeah, I, and you know, w- with the utmost respect to Wadman, I think a lot of people thought he looked great and outstanding. I yeah. didn't necessarily think so. I didn't see the pace, uh, yeah. the speed, the yeah. quickness, but I still think he's coming back. You know, his recovery, well documented. I think they did a documentary on it, but it, right. you know, I don't think he's quite there yet. Just getting in the wind column and having the confidence to throw the legs, but that Brad Tavares fight was brutal for him. No, I know. And honestly, the main reason I bet Wadman was because it was that he had the comeback fight and although it didn't go his way Tavares is actually a tough matchup for him because he has an 81% takedown defense and he's such a tough durable guy so I was like okay he lost to Tavares but now he's at least had one fight where he knows after that crazy injury he's like I can still at least fight so I was looking at it as like he's coming back for the second time and I think now it was just like okay I, have to sur- I looked at it as he had to survive that first round against Bruno he was the only dog he was plus 175 as yeah, an underdog. Yeah, th- that was free money because Bruno, I I respect his strike, but his fight IQ is very yeah. bad. Very bad, you know? Yeah. He was all the time going to the cage. like uh, and, 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 and like Jason was saying, I didn't feel that Chris Weidman was... You can... He's 39 years old, right? right? With a terrible injury. But I don't know. He looked bad to me. He looked bad... Uh, he was not supposed to beat Bruno, but I think the fight out IQ and of course his experience uh, d- yeah. that made the difference. But he didn't look great at all, and that's the problem because now maybe he got more confidence. But he's 39, uh, turning 40, and imagine if he get another guy that is a killer and yeah. that cannot be good for him. So I then I don't know. I saw a retired guy fighting. That's yeah. my opinion. I understand both your guys' viewpoint, but what I will say is. He had Bruno Silva. I mean, Bruno Silva just just knocked out Brad Tavares in that first round. Like, yeah, then, but 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 be, and he did good against uh, Alex Pereira. But because yeah. he's mainly a striker, right. when you mix takedowns, I think he just go automatic. You know, he just yeah. he just see. I don't know. No, I, I get it. All I'm saying is, for a second fight back after that injury, he had Bruno Silva second guessing himself on the feet a little bit. He was staying out of range, backing up. When he come, when Bruno Silva was charging forward, he had him second guessing his, his 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 when he was striking. So I thought it overall was a decent performance. I understand where both you guys are coming from, but maybe I'm a little biased. Uh, no, I mean I think it's a good point. You know, Silva, yeah. other than that Tavares knockout, he lost all other of his last five fights. He's lost four out of his last five. I, I just thought the Robert. I felt like he was looking for that sort of perfect finish rather than sort of throwing more volume and using his speed to an, in his advantage. But yeah. I got friends in this game, so just like I'll be rooting for money yeah. next Saturday yeah. night, I'm rooting for my boy Weidman. Can't help yeah. it. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about another fight on the card. Vicente Luque. This was a tough watch for me, honestly. So uh, this was 
the fight before I hit my parlay, right? <laughs> so I had a, a pretty big roller coaster of a night, to say the least. I had a big bet on, on uh, Vicente Luque. I looked at him as, okay, a minus 115 favorite. I think he closed around minus 125 as a slight favorite over Buckley. We know about Buckley. He's got the athleticism. He's younger. He's gotten a lot better over the years. But I still thought there was levels. I thought Vicente Luque was just the better guy with more ways to win. Um, and I actually sprinkled on him, on him by submission as well, which that was, in hindsight, a really bad bet. But what did you make of that fight? Because to me... And I hate to say this, but he just doesn't look like the same guy anymore. I couldn't agree more. And regardless of a guy's age, they're not that far in age. I think Luke's only 32, but he's still on the backside of his MMA career, whatever that prime may be, in yeah. my opinion. I also think Joaquin Buckley at 170 with that power is a problem. And that's yeah. not just a, and that's not an overstatement. I think he's ferocious. And I think when when and Moicano could speak to this better than me, but when guys get in that cage and you feel the power of your opponent, sometimes you know they don't have it, and sometimes you know they really do. And for yeah. me, I think I saw a little bit differently that fight going into it. A lot of the fighters I talked to absolutely felt as though Luke was the better martial artist almost across the board. However, Joaquin Buckley's scary, man. And I think, I mean, good luck. Now, now number 11, he's going to be a problem. Yeah. He's explosive. That You can tell, like Vicente was guessing, like when he was like shifting and throwing like crazy hooks and stuff. But what do you guys uh, thought of the first round? What do you guys thought? Who was, won the first round? It was very close. I, I think, honestly, Buckley's movement was more difficult to Luke than his power. I think <laughs> it's like the Alex Morono fight. I bet Alex Morono in that fight. I'm a big Alex Morono guy. I think he's super yes. underrated. I took him round two submission over Tim Means. It was 25 to one. <laughs> it was a crazy hit. But, and I, I've, I, I kind of sometimes fall victim to that. I win a big bet on a guy, and then I feel like I have to ride them their next fight. <laughs> yeah. And I did that with Morono against Buckley. Now I want to take Morono this coming weekend. He's a big favorite, but I kind of want to take him this weekend because now that loss has aged better. Like Buckley looks like he's the real deal. Yeah. But I guess what I'm getting at here is I think Buckley's movement is, you know, plus the South Paul, I think Luke always struggles with, but his movement is just really, really good. But, but I was asking because on the, on the end of the first round, Vicente Luke shoot for a takedown and he almost got the takedown and he was controlling. So I was, I was expecting Vicente to shoot more for takedowns. Even though we saw like last week, Gilbert say he's not going to. He's not gonna yeah. try takedowns, and but he's better on the on the on the grappling, the grappling than Buckley. But that's why I said I think the movement was really tough for him because you look at the RDA fight, he controlled RDA a lot, but RDA doesn't have as much like in and out movement, and he was able to get RDA up against the cage and then get the takedowns or at least get you know get some control time there. Yeah. And I think with with Buckley, you can't do it. You just can't do that. He couldn't get to him. And when Luke sort of what did he pull guard? I mean, uh, and then That's that was sort of the beginning of the end. That was man, that was crazy because he shoot for a takedown and then he kind of fell back on his back and then he was not moving. He was not trying nothing. It was I, I don't know if he felt something, but was was kind of confusing, right? It was very confusing to me in real time. I was screaming at my fucking TV, bro. <laughs> like, I'm a big Luke fan. I think he's a super nice guy. I really like him. But I was yelling at him. I was like, bro, because like he wasn't, it wasn't like Buckley had mount on him and was just raining punches. I thought he could have just went to his back. He could have went to his stomach, like turned over, like got up somehow. And he just, to me, it felt like he wanted to cover up more and just not get hit yes. in the head, which I, yes. look, I understand. The guy had a brain bleed. Right. right. And it's, it, you know, I don't even want to talk about this because a part of me feels bad talking about it, but that's just my honest observation of it is, you know, I, if I had a brain bleed, I wouldn't want someone punching me in the head mm -hmm. either. Yeah. I really want it, bro. So that, that's the way I look at that fight. But crazy, crazy night overall between the referee and um, some of these bad beats. I did hit the parlay. The last fight of the night was I had Fior by decision. So even when that fight went the distance. She was it, underdog, right? She was the underdog. And honestly, it was such a bad number. You said it last week on the show. You knew it. Yeah. I wish I made more content about it. I should have like trusted my gut and been like bold about it. But like I thought Blanchfield's only way to win was like a late finish. Because when you go back and watch Aaron Blanchfield's fights, as good as her wrestling is, she struggles to get takedowns early. Round one, she almost never gets them unless it's like a, a really inferior opponent. 
When she goes up to good competition, she struggles on takedowns. Then it's usually like round two. She maybe she'll get a trip or a good double leg or something. But like this girl is huge. Like she should not be in this weight class, honestly. Like she's massive. And I didn't think she was gonna be able to get the takedowns. Um, I th- I actually hedged a little bit because I took the late finish props. I was like, if she wins, it'll be like round three, four, five because she's just relentless with the, with the grappling. But uh, yeah, I had the decision. It was like plus three fifty odds and. Even when it felt like it was an easy, no-brain win, I was still sweating the scorecards because you just never know what's going through these judges' heads anymore, let, man. Let me ask <laughs> you something, Matthew. Uh, do you think the, the logic is the same when you're betting on women's MMA and men's MMA? Do you think it's the same? Or it's because I think women's MMA is more risky to bet it? Because you, like, like you, you, you did a bet on... The, the lady that fought against Vijan Giroba, right? By, yeah. by TKO. Mm, yeah. That's insane to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is. But there's a re- you got to remember, everything's relative, right? If something's less likely to happen, the payout's way higher, right? So, like, I But actually- how do you balance that? Because if even though if you want to chase the underdog all the time, like, you're going to lose yeah. more than, than win. For sure. And that's why it's all about bankroll management, right? Like, you can't put a huge bet down on a 10 to 1 long shot, right? Think of it this way. If something's 10 to 1 odds, you got to win one out of 10 times to make a profit. Okay. Right? So yeah. if I hit, if I'm betting, if I bet $100, right? If I bet $100 on a 10 to 1 bet, He's looking. No, I'm Moikana looking to see if money, right? <laughs> <laughs> I saw, I saw Man, let me tell you something. Money, bro. I thought this motherfucker just <laughs> put like a hundred fucking thousand, hundred dollars. No, this is the okay, fucking. Here's what, I'm saying, here's what I'm saying. If you bet a hundred dollars on a 10 to 1 bet, right? So let's say a women's MMA fighter. It's safe to say they're going to get a knockout eventually. One out of 10 times, maybe? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. If, if I have a fighter at 10 to 1 to win by knockout once. If she doesn't get a knockout for nine straight fights, I lose $900, right? But if she gets it on the 10th fight, I win $1,000. So I make $100 profit. So it's just the math, right? It's the like, odds, right? It's the, the odds. It's like uh, roulette. You're not betting yeah. your house on a roulette wheel. But if you bet a small amount every single time, eventually, hopefully, the 35 to one's going to hit. Well, yeah, and that 35 to one, it's like that, but like, 1,000 to pay 30 grand. He's expecting it to dump. He's not, he's expecting yeah. to lose that money most right. of the time. Right. So, yeah. but he balances it up. Yeah, I try to at least. So, all right, let's move on to the fight night card. So this is this weekend. Um, so Chris Curtis versus Brendan Allen. What are your What are your first thoughts on this? Oh, one? I got so many thoughts on that. It's really interesting to me because Brent, I watched the first fight back today, and I think we might have some disagreement on how that first fight went down. Actually, when I'm looking at your notes, but when I look at Brendan Allen since that Chris Curtis fight, and it's all about the mental game for me with Brendan Allen. He's won six straight fights. I think the last four all by rear naked choke. I just think he's <laughs> he's still a young guy on the right side of 30. I just think that he's so much of a different fighter than he was back then. Whereas, no disrespect to Chris Curtis, he's a mean motherfucker, but I think he's pretty much the same guy we saw back then. So, yeah. But for me, I can't wait for this one. I usually don't like rematches, but you can sign me up for this one. Yeah, no, I agree. He could have wore Brent, Bruno Silva out over a couple of rounds Round one, he club and subs him. You know, he he knocks him to the ground, submits him. I think Brendan Allen just believes he's a future champ. I think he really deep down believes it, and I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna avenge this loss, and I think he's gonna make it look easy. Yeah, what is the odds on the fight? I think he's a two to one favorite. Let me check right now, but I'm pretty sure. Man, I, I like to watch Brendan Allen. I think he's very very well rounded, yes. very very like. Like, uh, like I, I always say, if you have a good striking, a decent grappling, and like you're good at taking the back, that's money, right? Because Brendan Ali, what, what, what Chris Curtis can do against him? He can like knock him out, sure, but what's the odds? Because he's tall, very good striker, he can take Chris Curtis down, and eventually if he got on the mount, uh, Chris Curtis is going to give the back and he's going to get the, the real naked choke. The easiest submission on the whole game, my brother. Yeah. yeah. Real naked choke is easy. Right, right. I mean, Chris Curtis does have the 92% takedown defense. He's known for that and is really good boxing. So I think that's what makes the fight a little bit interesting. But at the same time, I think Brandon Allen is just a different fighter than in the first fight. He, is he, he lost to, but he lost to Kevin Gastelum. Kevin Gastelum is not on his prime anymore. Yeah. Like, yep. you, 
Right. That so, was a controversial fight, though. I think he got like a headbutt or something. Yep. But it was a very was close, close, close yeah. good fight for sure. But 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 I mean, like he, Chris Kurt, he is a boxer. He is a boxer. He moves very well. But other than that, I don't think he have he has many weapons against a guy like Brandon Allen. I'm you with know, you, Brandon Allen. It's really interesting because maybe a year ago, even a year and a half ago, there was, I don't want to say rumblings that he was going to be getting a title shot, but a lot changed in that middleweight division where if Izzy was still the champ, a lot of people thought Brendan Allen was the best chance to sort of match up well and maybe take that fight to the ground. So for me, it's sort of a weird shakeup for Brendan Allen. Then he's supposed to face Vittori. He gets an opponent who he's already faced, but Brendan Allen, this is a huge spot. You can't lose to this guy twice. No, you know, no. it's a couple years setback to that championship opportunity. It's a great opportunity for Chris Curtis. If you're him, you're like, oh, I get to fight a guy of already knocked out and try to take him his spot in the rankings like I think it's a great, op great well, opportunity. Well, and if I can, that first fight, I mean, Curtis, I think what he did to the body really sort of, I don't know if he'll be able to do that again, but that's really what sort of hurt Allen, but yeah, I hear you, man. I agree. All right, official pick. Brendan Allen's minus 225. I'm taking him. What do you think? <laughs> What do I think of your pick? Do you, do you, like, do you like Brendan? <laughs> I like your pick. Yeah, it's you know for me, it's always a struggle picking MMA. I don't bet MMA. Oh, I don't really? bet MMA. What do you bet? Well, I don't even know if I'm contractually allowed to bet MMA. You know what I mean? So he's so close to my twin brother. You know who's not allowed to bet. But no, I've been betting professional sports since I was 18 years old. NFL, NBA, baseball, basketball, football. Those are rookie, those I, are rookie numbers, bro. I was betting since I was like 12. I bet. I bet. Well, you know, I'm older than you, right? So for me, 1996, that was pretty early. Over Antigua was taking my action, you know? Um, but no, I do like Brendan Allen if you're forcing me to make a selection. I like Chris Curtis very much. I love Eric Nixick and the work he's done with Curtis. But yeah, I think it's Brendan Allen's time. I, I agree. And, and Jason, what do you think about this prohibition of UFC fighters uh, can't bet? Can bet? Do you think is that right or wrong? Well, it's so interesting because I remember. I'm trying to remember who the name of the fighter was. My brother has never bet on this stuff since he's worked for the promotion. But at one point, I think he could bet on boxing. Where now it's none of that. But I liked it back when fighters could go bet on themselves. You yeah, know what of I course. mean? Um, so for me, as long as you're betting on yourself. Right. Yeah. And you can document. Right. I mean, but I'm not trying to get in that. But certainly betting against yourself. Yes. A that's, whole different yeah. conversation. Right. Yeah. Right. There's yeah. there's in the gambling space. There's so much controversy about this. Right. Because we see in the NFL, Calvin Ridley, we see all this stuff that comes out. The pro, I'm so heavily into sports betting. I love it. But I, I actually believe it's good for the sport and the integrity for fighters, not even for anyone in professional sports to not be able to even bet on themselves yeah but the, the problem is we that love betting brother i can't but where does it <laughs> but where does it where does it get where does it get complicated right if you're a fighter sure you should be able to bet on your money line but what if you're betting on yourself to win by round three now yeah. are you not are you not trying as hard in round no, one or round well, two but, but i i don't agree with this point my brother if you can't finish the fight on the first round even though I bet thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars, it's better for me to finish the fight, my brother. Right, but again, you. But what if you bet? 20, Especially 000? in UFC, because it's not like people are picking and choosing their opponents. Right, right. It's but like uh, the best of the let best. Let me ask you this: If you were allowed to bet on yourself, you're fighting money Jay line, money line. Okay, yeah, uh, money but let's go. But that's my point: is there has to be rules, right? Because let's look at the NFL, for example. No, but because Let, it's tough. If I knew that I would finish him on the third round, I would bet that. But I cannot control because imagine I have the opportunity to finish you on the first round and I say, no, my, my bet is on the <laughs> second. I'm not going to finish it. <laughs> that, that's and my then point. he knocked the fuck out of me. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know? But that's my it's point. It's not like that MMA is different than basketball, than fucking NFL because it's fighting. When you're fighting, you're just trying to kill the guy. You don't have time to, to pick and choose what you're going to do, right? Right. But that's why I'm saying I just think it's it's very gray area of like I, yeah. I agree with their stance on you can't bet anything yourself. You can't bet because it's just then once you bet on yourself, now it's like, oh, well, I bet on myself by submission. Yeah. Or I took the over and now I'm stalling a little bit. Like it's it's very sketchy. The crazy thing is someone told me this a while ago in the NFL or in the NBA, let's imagine that Jason and I went to college together, right? And now we're in the NFL and our teams are playing each other. What if I bet, what if I put a big bet in and I'm not throwing the game, but my friend on the other team is now throwing the game? Exactly. There's so much that could happen, right? No, like, I'm with you. Obviously, fighting's different. Um, but I think the minute you even allow these guys to bet on themselves, there's still, 
some confusion and complications and things that can still go down and happen. And I think that's why the policy makes sense. Like they can't bet period. I totally get it and understand it, honestly. Yeah. And guys being injured, whether it's TJ Dillashaw going into that fight, you know, knowing you pass that information to the other side, it's too murky. I get oh, it. Oh yeah. Yeah. The whole James Cross issue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. But, but at the same time, at the same time, let me tell you something. Uh, was good for me because I was just losing anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so if you so if you could bet on yourself, and let's say, what are your odds right now for me? I think I am Two the best one? underdog of the year. I, I agree. That's bro. my opinion, my brother. Yeah. That's my opinion. Right. I'm not financial advisor, but you can <laughs> if you can bet on money more kind of plus. 200 and fucking something. I'm winning that fight, my brother. 100%. Dude, let's go. Let me pull these odds up. Are you two to one right now? I think so. Oh, I gotta look. The level this. of disrespect, my brother. Right? Well, <laughs> so we gotta get Hinato betting on other sports. That's what we gotta do. Get you in the NFL. <laughs> but I don't know enough about the other sports. I hear NFL, you. I didn't even know the rules and stuff. I just see people randomly running. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you are a two to one underdog. I just confirmed it against Jalen Turner. If you were allowed to, would you bet half your fight purse at plus 200 odds? No. 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 Not worth it? No, no, no. Because what happened is, I remember one time a guy that did that and, and, and lost. I'm trying to remember the name because I literally made a video about it a couple years ago. I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah, the motherfucker just did that. It, but it's a, guy, it's a guy probably making 12 and 12 or something too. Like he's not making a lot of yeah. money. It's not yeah. like he's on the main event. No, I cannot bet my half of my personal. But this, I respect but, but that. Why? B listen to me, because I, I some sometimes I feel like if you, if you put money like that, if you bet in yourself that that like crazy amount, something that can that can really help you. Maybe this is on a, in the back of your head. Yeah. So you're going to fight if I lose. Even though I'm confident, I will beat Charlie Turner. I, I truly believe that I'm better than him everywhere. Mm -hmm. But imagine I put like fucking hundreds of thousands of dollars <laughs> on the fucking bed, right? Yeah. And then, and, and then in the back of my head, I go over there. I, I am warming up and I say, man, if I lose, I'm going to lose that much money. If I lose, I'm going to, you know? Right. So that's why. And I'm superstitious too. So yeah, on the fight week, I don't like to talk too much i don't like to bet i don't i like to to be focused and i think not betting especially on the fight week is is a way to 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 be on the focus yeah no, maddie I, I let me ask that. you a question so yeah. like a guy like luke who you consider a friend or you've gotten to know a little bit right yeah. now you get to know hanato how do you even begin to handicap his fight when now you consider him a friend? Like, if I'm in your spot, no matter how much I love having action all day, I'm just, like, laying off because right, right. it's my friend. How do you balance so that? So the way I look at it, and some people might laugh at this, but the way I look at it is if I'm not betting on my friend, I'm not supporting him. Love it. I'll, I'll bet on love you. It. If I think you're going to get knocked out, I would still bet on you. And I don't think that. I think you're going to win this fight. But I'm telling you right now, I would bet. I've bet on so many of my uh, – I've bet on so many people – just to support them. And because when you win, I want to win with you. And when you lose, I want to be down it. bad with you. I love you. it. I and that's what it. I did on yeah. Gilbert, bro. Like, I told Gilbert on the last episode. <laughs> I was like, bro, I had your money line and Poirier money line. I would have won 32000 You just had to survive for 90 <laughs> seconds, bro. <laughs> yeah. You know, but like, that's just how I look at it. Like, I, I, want to, I want to ride for them, you know? And I want to feel it when they win, too. You know, as much as I would be happy for, for my friends when they win... There's some extra motivation there if I'm, if I'm yeah. making some money. So are you going to take his advice, money line, or are you going to mix it with a few others? You don't I know think, yet. Huh? I think I'm going to do like, so do you know what double chance is? No. I'm betting. So you can bet a fighter double chance, which means you pick two of the three outcomes. So I okay. think for you, I would do submission slash decision. I think because it'll pay more. Yeah. If I take your money line, it'll probably be two to one. If I do the double chance, it'll probably be three to one. Um, but I think your path... Submission or decision on Jalen Turner? That would be my prediction. If you do win, um, I mean, what do you think? What do you think about that? No, I, f first of all, I know what you're talking about, and when we were allowed to bet, mm -hmm. I didn't bet against my friends because even though if you know the guy is going to lose, and and you bet on the other guy, you're gonna cheer for the other guy because it's fun, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So even though, so especially because I I am from American Top Team, yeah. and I see a lot of guys that fighting together, training over there. So usually, 
I, I know I can tell who is going to win if it's, especially if it's my division. Yeah. And that happens before when Grant Dawson fought uh Bobby Green? No, when he fought um, uh Dami Hadzovic. Dami, no, no, uh Smagulov. Dami yeah, yeah. Smagulov. And he I mean, he's an underdog. Or yeah, was he pick, was an was underdog. Yeah. He was like plus 150. Yeah. And I tell on my channel, like, man, he's going to win for sure. I train with both. I know he's going to win. Yeah. You know? But at that time, I killed him bad. But imagine Smagulov was my friend. Yeah. Imagine. And, and I put right. money on Dawson. I will be, let's go fucking Dawson. Let's go. <laughs> and and, and yeah. morally, that's bad. For but sure. But th this is one thing. But uh, another thing is, if I think my friend is going to lose, I'm going to tell them. Ha. Huh. You know? Because sometimes... So and how, honestly, how do you how do you approach that though? I don't approach that. I'd say on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> I you say what though, bro. <laughs> I respect the shit out of that because I've been on record for years now saying, asking fighters which fighter is going to win nine times out of ten is too many biases, yep. and yeah. it's not the way to go. Right? You literally pick against people that are in your own gym or you are friends with because. You're at the end of the day, you want the people that watch your channel to know that you're giving them your honest opinion. But if you cannot give your honest opinion on a friend, who are you gonna give the the, the opinion? Yeah. So and and, and that's I, I'm serious about that. So I like to do UFC prediction videos, mm -hmm. and I tell what I see. And sometimes I'm wrong, sometimes I'm right, but I'm right. never gonna tell you I think this guy's going to win just because he's my friend. Right. You know. And I hope they don't see because people are so fucking emotional about that yeah you know i don't fucking care if you say hey i think you're going to lose yep. okay right. this is a fucking profession this is not a fucking you know i don't need to yeah to, to tell you going to win or you get man if i if i think the guy's going to win i will tell if i think the guy's going to lose but some people they get mad yeah of course what's it like for you because you have so many you and john have so many friends in mma like what does that look like because you guys do you guys do your predictions. At least I know you're not betting on the sport, but... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> to be honest, I put out... You, this is probably the most predictive I've ever been, even just picking that Brendan Allen, Chris Curtis. I, I tow a pretty safe line on my show... You know, I tee up Bilal Muhammad. He makes picks, but he picked with his heart. He's not betting against his friends, to your point. Like, right. he won't... But John used to make picks way back in the day on his podcast and one episode UFC cut wind of that they're like no more and that for him yeah. that he don't need to be doing any of that you know but it's a, yeah it's the, a, the fans they complain so much about commentary they're like this this all everyone all the commentators I see it all the time on social media this guy was biased he's calling the fights he's, he loves this guy like people just need to shut up man yeah. they complain about yeah. everything bro no, so I can imagine how difficult that is because John if you if they if they listen to John's podcast and he's picking fighters and then he's commentating, you already know they're gonna even dig into it even worse. Yeah, man. It's well, and you hit the the word on the head, which is bias. That's what strikes a nerve with him is when people think there's any bias involved. I but, think it's ridiculous. But look, it's like I met Hinato at UFC 299 in Miami. We're doing this extra rounds UFC fight pass show. First time I'd ever met him, we maybe connected on social media. Now I'm here with him. My interest in his fight grows every single time that I get to know him more or their relationship develops. So for me, some of the, Bilal Muhammad's become one of my best friends. Last time he fought, I brought sunglasses because I was afraid if he finished Burns, I'd be crying. You understand? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, so it, it does get complicated, but that's the best part of it. Nothing like sitting there feeling like, and you know, you've cornered guys before. A lot of these fighters say that's the hardest thing for them is when they're cornering other fighters. That's when the emotions, yeah. you know, are real tough. I can only imagine for Gilbert this past weekend because he yeah. corners his brother and then his brother gets finished and then he's got the corner to corner Luke. man, I felt terrible. That's yeah, but it's the fight game. That's I don't think is, people, uh, you know, me personally, I don't care that much. We are getting paid. We are doing what we love. So... You you fan like that you like to talk shit, man. We we love that. We like that and and me personally feel free to talk shit on the <laughs> comments about myself because I love that shit. I don't care. Back in the day I used to care about what people think and what people say, but nowadays I just think tell what your truth, you you know? If whatever you want, I don't fucking care, my brother. Yeah. It <laughs> helps your videos go get more views when people comment hey. Yeah, but th that stuff because I feel like the YouTube, YouTube, is it is designed to promote like uh, 
stuff out of the the top, right? Like, like crazy stuff. So yeah. uh, more aggressive that you are, t more talk shit that you do, you're gonna get more views. And I don't think 100%. that's the that's the 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 way to do things. You know, I think honestly, you just have to be true to yourself and and talk what you're feeling, and then people are gonna connect with you. And that's going to be good. And that's why this podcast is going to be the best. Because that's why we're doing it. And I'm really impressed with the numbers, especially because we have low subscribers. We just have to keep talking the truth and eventually you're going to get big. Couldn't agree more, bro. All right, well, let's dive into... We have UFC Saudi Arabia coming up as well. I want to talk on that. Obviously, we want to talk on 300 some. Um, I think we'll have you some next week before you leave. Hopefully, we can film this on, on Sunday night. I think you're leaving Monday, so we'll be able to talk about UFC 300 some then. But I want to talk to both of you about UFC Saudi Arabia because there's two really good fights that were just recently announced. Robert Whitaker versus Hamzat Chemaev and Pavlovich versus Volkov. Let's start with Jason here. What are your thoughts on the Robert Whitaker versus Hamzat Chemaev fight? A lot of people think Robert Whitaker is a live dog here. What do you think? You know, for me, I know last week you guys talked about the biggest stars in the UFC. And unless I'm mistaken, I don't know if anyone mentioned Hamza Chimaev, right? He's not active Only enough Only the for people me, in the comments. I will, I will <laughs> no, and, and honestly, I, I didn't even think about that until this moment. Yeah. But Jacksonville, Florida, when he fought Gilbert Burns, right? Oh, my God. Nothing. When Hamza walked into that arena, man, that's with respect. I mean, that's McGregor. He's so for me, that star power is just and everyone just so yearning to watch him fight. I don't. I feel like Robert Whitaker, man. Even that last fight, it was. I don't know, man. That after the Duplessis fight, I don't know, man. I thought he was indestructible before that, so I, I think it's going to be tough. But I don't know. What's the line? Is it close? So I think Hamzat's about a minus one eighty favorite. Some books had it really close early on. I think he's. I think he'll close is probably around a two to one favorite here. Let me ask you this: Who would you take in a pick em, Kamaru or Whitaker? Because I'm not so sure Whitaker gets through Kamara. At 85, I hear you. Yeah, I guess at 85. You know, asking me on the spot, I'd probably say Whitaker. Yeah. Um, just because I, I haven't seen enough, you know, with, with Usman moving up. But yeah. um, the, the thing is, Chimaev is still such a wild card. Even if even if I talk about his star power, I'm not telling you I'm necessarily go to the window right. against Robert Whitaker. It's tough. Um, it's tough to lay like two to one against Robert Whitaker. The thing, I was at that card with Gilbert and, uh, and Hamzat. The thing I will say, the aura of the walkouts and that fight, I just think is different than the current Hamza. Like back then, <laughs> he was like this invincible guy that no one could even land a strike against before he fought Gilbert. I just feel like the, the, the general public feels a little differently about him now. And that's not to say he couldn't come out, finish Robert Whitaker. We've seen Duplessis finish Whitaker, so I think Hamza could finish him. Um, I think it would have to be in the first, like, seven minutes of that fight if he's going to finish him because I think as that fight goes on, I think Whitaker is, a, um, is much more alive of a dog. But I don't know. Am I crazy to think that there was just a bigger aura around Hamzat? Like, he seemed so invincible early on, and now I don't think the fans feel the same way. I feel on the completely opposite side really? of this. Yeah. Okay. Because back in the day when people saw that aura, I was saying, this guy is still untested. Yeah. He <laughs> was still untested. He was still, he was like mauling everybody, but bad competition. We saw the guy that he beat on Abu Dhabi f fighting less card. Mm -hmm. He's not a great, it was not a great fight. It was not a, uh, Top level fighter, but let me tell you something. After the Usman fight, I respect Kazimat way more because the way he took him down, the way he controlled him, of course, he always had problems with the cardio, mm -hmm. and that could be. And I don't think that's going to be a problem because I don't see Robert Whitaker trying to rest, out wrestle him. So I think he's going to get the takedown. I think Kazimat will beat him. And, and, and the, he's too big to, to fail. That's my opinion. Yeah. Like UFC. UFC needs Chimaev, like you're saying. I was not I was I was surprised that we didn't remember him because he's a star. He's a huge uh, honestly he didn't even it's 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 the activity. 
Because yep. yeah, didn't exactly. even come to yes. mind when we were talking yeah. about that. Well, and so so for me, though, to your point, which I think your, your point's very well taken, and I would probably agree. However, as this buildup of this fight comes, people are going to be absolutely ravenous for it. And I'm just curious. It is overseas, and that, and I know it's been tough to get him to fight here, but yeah. can you imagine if this guy was on 300? Do you think anyone <laughs> yeah. would have any problem yeah. if he was taking that, the instead of Pereira, if he was on that poster, yeah. no one would have any problem yeah. I agree. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and it's a mix because he like he's a mix of Khabib and Mike Gregor and, and you know <laughs> on the fucking 185. Yeah. And his wrestling is good. His striking is good. Ba back in the day, I used to have doubts on him because because like I say, the competition. But after especially Usman, I I think that if he fought Paulo Costa, he would destroy Paulo Costa <laughs> in my opinion. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. I think so. So, so uh, let's see. I, I still, I, I still on the hype train of. Chima, yeah, well, you know? and I wonder too. It's like we haven't seen him in a while. All these guys get better. I'm sure you think you're better than the last time you made that walk. So it's like if you guys are always getting better, like maybe he can improve that cardio. It's hard yeah. for me to see him improving that cardio. Yeah, I oh. agree. Do you think some people is like with cardio though? That it's just so much to do with like. Genetics, gen like fucking genetic. You is. see Dustin Poirier, crazy, yeah. crazy cardio. He he does, uh, he does train really hard, you know. B but I think it's something that he born with. Yeah. Some people because I see on the gym some people that like they run every day, then do they do cardio, they do air bike, they do all that shit, and they still fucking get gas. And I think it's something maybe mentally too. Because once I realized, I, I was so afraid to, on my beginning in the UFC in the MMA, I was so, I was so afraid to to guess that I, I I I used to not try takedowns and you know, but I, I, from 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 learning from Dustin Poirier and watching uh, guys that are being longer on the game, you you going to get tired. You mm -hmm. just have to keep going. You know, because in, on, on my mind, I thought, okay, you cannot be tired, otherwise you're going to lose. No, you're going to get tired, but you have to keep pushing. Do you think Khabib was not getting tired on the, on the fights? He, after the fight, he will be completely gassed. But on the fight, he, his mindset, and that's why I think wrestling is so good because they push you through some grueling training session, grueling competition, and then you. I, I was, I was seeing an article talking about that that they they put the athletes so much in, in like situations and they stress them out that his mind they developing another uh like way to deal with fatigue hmm. so so mm -hmm. uh i think some people are better you you definitely could work the mindset and stuff but some people are just born for that like gsp and other guys that have great cardio. Or even Nate Diaz, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? I was going to mention Diaz. Yeah. Well, and Marab and what Colby Marab, has. Colby yeah. has legendary cardio. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's interesting. Now, I always wondered that. Because I feel like I'm trying, to, I'm, trying to, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out what fighters come to mind, but there's been some fighters recently I feel like just train their ass off for hours and hours and hours every day, focus on their cardio, but then when they get in there, for some reason, it just their their gas tank just goes. I'm trying to think of some good examples of that, but I know th I know there was a few recent heavyweights, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, All but right. they don't train that much. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's. Th so the Sergey Pavlovich versus Volkov fight. So is this fight even official? Because I saw. Did you see that there was both their camps saying uh, neither of them were aware of the matchup before the announcement? Did you see that? Yep. So what are your thoughts on that? Is it fight official? Is it well, the UFC does whatever the fuck they want <laughs> with, with respect. And some fighters certainly have more say in different things than others. But a lot of time there's a little juice they put out there to try and sort of get things going. And guess what? Do I think this fight's going to happen? Absolutely. Are those guys a little bit upset maybe that they hadn't caught wind of it before it got announced? Maybe. But is it really going to matter? You know, Sean Brady, I guess, was going to be fighting Luke in Atlantic City. And I'm not so sure when that announcement you know, came out how aware he might have been at that time or whatever. So this, it's not like this doesn't happen in the UFC. You can be sure that it does. Um, great fight, though. Volkov's, what, won three in a row? He's, he's a little slept on. This is a, I think this is a scary fight for Pavlovich because coming off the knockout, again, it's kind of like the, it's kind of like Hamzat. He was perceived as like untouchable, just an absolute powerhouse. 
goes in there against Tom Aspinall. Actually, Tom Aspinall was the last leg of my parlay that <laughs> night, and every person said the cash out of it. They were like, there's no chance. That's one of those fights. You know how there's those fights where the underdog is like the favorite in the yep. public mind? That was one of those fights. We were like, Aspinall is the favorite on a couple weeks' notice. What is going on? And for, he got it done with the boxing, too, which was the craziest part. But pa uh, this is a tough fight for Pavlovich. Volkov is a monster. I agree. Like, And he's coming off the – like, obviously, if he was not coming off the knockout loss – I think you feel more comfortable about picking him here, but Volkov's really good. He's, I think he's really underrated. Who do you think gets that one done? I think I still think Pavlovich. Yeah, he's too fast, and I, 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 I see him training at the gym sometimes, and and it's funny because he's one of those guys that don't go very hard on training. Hmm. Really? Yeah. No, he, he. I think because he knows his power, so he training with guys and just touching and just and then. He went to fight and tried to destroy guys like in the first <laughs> round. So so I think, but when you see he hitting the mitts and doing like bag work, you can see he's very fast. He's one of those things. Like he has like the fast twitch uh, um, muscles, mm -hmm. right, right? So yeah. I think Volkov, like he relies too much on his range because he's very tall. And I think Pavlovich is going to be guns blazing and trying to knock him out on the force. We never know. He's coming off a, a loss, a knockout, but I, I still think Pavlovich gets the job done. Yeah. You know, and I do think coming off a loss, obviously the knockout component and where his brain is at is one part of the conversation, but I like guys coming off losses. Like, you don't think Aaron Blanchfield, like, that's a blessing. That's better for her longevity, her, for her career, to me, getting that loss. Um, go watch Bilal Muhammad's last loss to Jeff Neal a long time ago, but yeah. the toughness, he got beat up that night you know yeah. so i don't know i like pavlovich coming off a loss i just i think volkov's faced some good competition been there a while and i don't like always sleeping on the veterans you know yeah that's one of those fights where the over under is going to be one and a half and the under is going to be heavily juiced and i think pa i have a feeling volkov can survive for <laughs> a little make it interesting but it's scary <laughs> it's scary betting against pavlovich not yeah. to get a first round knockout and, you and know? especially heavyweights everything can happen on heavyweights they are yeah they are big. They can knock you out. So it's a tough bet. Yeah, agreed. All right, let's dive into some UFC 300. We'll talk some more next week on it too. But I gotta, I gotta go through this card because I just found out today, or I, I just decided today. I was like, I gotta go. What am I doing? I was gonna stay here in Florida and and watch here from the studio. But he's going to that. be on T-Mobile. T-Mobile. Yes. He's going, you're going to be there, Jason. Yes, I will be there. We gotta go. So I'm going. You know, I you know you know where I sit when I go to these fights. You know, no. I just I look just like the guy who calls it, so I just sneak right in behind him. <laughs> I, I sit with Rogan security. Nobody said anything to me for years. But no, it's good that you can be out there watching your boy money too. Dude, oh, that's that's good. So, so next pumped. week, I don't mean to interrupt you. Are you yeah. gonna hammer him on Sunday night about his fight? Because I'm chomping to talk to this guy about Jalen Turner, <laughs> yeah. but I'll no, I'll just but, dude, I'll hand the mic to you. Let's do it right now. <clears throat> well, so when I met you. Uh, in Miami, I couldn't believe how big you are, and your opponent is, you know, Way even bigger. bigger. Have you fought a guy like that? Did you bring in anyone of of size in your camp? Uh, I, I fought a guy, Jay Ebert. Uh, he's tall too. I don't think he's. Um, look it up. His Jay is six three. I think. How how Joe Rogan say? Uh, what's the name of the guy on Joe Rogan? Jamie, pull up, right? Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we need to do that. Exactly. Jamie, pull up. <laughs> the, but but. Uh, this guy, Jay Abbott, very tall too, good striker. Oh, yeah. He is not good as Jalen Turner. I think Jalen Turner is better than him, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. I'm, I'm not going to talk too much about that, but I'm confident. I, I feel like I have been... I changed my game completely on the last, I don't know, four years since I, I, I came to the... 155, and I think I am on my prime. Even though I'm 34, I still have a lot to accomplish on that on the uh, division. And the most thing, important thing, I can't afford to lose. So I'm going over there, and I'm beating Jalen Turner. Love and it. after that, I will keep climbing the rankings because Moicano wants fucking money. Exactly. <laughs> Let's go. I love it. And if you want money, you cannot lose. Only <laughs> losers. You know, if you, you have to be a winning in life, you have to be a winning in UFC and I'm not losing to Jalen Turner. I, his, I respect the shit out of him. I think he's tough. I think he's durable. But I'm better than him. I will prove on April 13th on the best fight night card ever. UFC 300. Let's fucking go. Dude, I love it. And isn't it such an honor to be on this card? For you, 
<laughs> the, the true honor is to be remembered by the UFC in the meaning that they, they let's be honest, UFC 300 only veterans, only what's up, my brother? What's up, my brother? <laughs> I knew the he let that of go. disrespect. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking, my friend. No, I mean in, in the meaning that uh, just to be remembered to fight in a card that how many champions gonna fight over there? Champions and former champions. Eleven. I don't even know. Eleven. So just look at that. The, the fight before me are Davidson Figueiredo and and Cody Garbrandt. Cody two Garbrandt, champs, exactly. Two former champs, and, and after that, uh, a former champ too, right? The Jessica and the other girl, and then Clay Guida and not Clay Guida. Clay Guida <laughs> is old man, but not, not as old as Bobby Green. <laughs> I'm joking. Bobby Green and Jim Miller, two legends of the sport too. Yeah. So I'm very happy to be on UFC 300, especially because of the visibility and just to... I was happy when UFC asked me, but at the same time, I have to not care too much, you know? Yeah. Because it's good to be on UFC 300, but it's only worth if you win. You have to remember that. doesn't matter if I am UFC 300 and I'm losing, so that's why I'm not losing. I love it. I'm not losing because I think that's a favorable matchup for me. I have been asking for the for the fight for a long time. I know he's good, but I know I, I got what it takes to beat him. So, so a lot of people asking me, so UFC 300 is going to be regular one for me. I'm going to go to the fight week. I'm going to cut my, cut my weight. And then when they hand the mic to me, then I, I will talk shit. And exactly. then I will say the truth, my brother. <clears throat> UFC 300, I can't wait. No, but I love it, and I you said that you were superstitious, and I, I like that. And it's a blessing that it's in Vegas, right? You've done fights in Vegas, right? Just the normal, just another week. I love yeah, it. exactly. Another week. Uh, you know, I think if you start to... Because look look, look at that. My first main event was a, against Korean Zombie. What was opportunity, and I lost. But I was so happy to be the main event. I was so happy on the fight week. I got like, oh, man, I will be a star after that. I was... So, so one step at a time, one yes. step at a time. UFC 300 doesn't matter if I don't beat Jalen fucking Turner. <laughs> so that's why I'm not thinking about that. Love I it. only, I only think on what I can control. What I can control now, my emotions, my weight, and, and, and Saturday I will be locking up April 13, and I'm willing to die on that fucking cage always, like I did all, through all my life, and that I can. I don't want to talk too much. If you give no, me the I mic, I will talk too much. <laughs> but if you are listening to that, I'm I'm truly willing to die in every fucking fight. And you have to do that with your life. You want if you want to accomplish something meaningful in your life, you have to willing to die. And I am UFC 300 and the best underdog of the year, Money Moicano, my brother. Dude, what is better don't than miss, that? Don't miss that fucking opportunity. <laughs> Dude, that camera right in your face is fucking perfect, huh? Don't you like that thing? You just <laughs> fuck like, right there. I love that thing. I love that thing. <laughs> Bro. I'm so excited, man. You got me, you got me so pumped up. Been like Sadiq Yusuf versus Diego Lopez. Dude. Is going to yeah. be insane, that's, that's bro. That's a good fight. Who do you like there? Uh, Diego Lopez. I, I think Dude. Diego Lopez. Yeah is a star in the making. 100%. He's a finisher. So I saw him at a fight. But he's not Brazilian. He's Mexican. Yeah. Interesting. No, no, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, I <don't> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> so I saw him at a fight. He was just just there, like, in regular clothes, just watching the fights, right? And he would run through the hallways, and all these young kids would go crazy for him, man, following him, pictures. Like, I think he's a star in the making. And Sadiq Youssef is no joke. But I think I think that Diego Lopez finishes him. I I think Diego Lopez is the next generation of jiu-jitsu in MMA. In the meaning that we we not seeing people doing what he's doing now against mm -hmm. a tough opponent. Pat Sabatini is a very good fighter, and he like pull guard and he got to him in a submission in the first round. So Diego Lopez can strike. And if you remember the short notice fight against Evloev, Evloev oh. is a beast. Evloev is fighting for the fucking belt. Evloev has a fucking country backing him up, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and he is very good, one of the best wrestlers in MMA, and Diego Lopez did great against him in fucking short-notice fight. 
So I think this kid is the future. He has charisma, like you say. The kids love him. He has a fucking ugly fucking head that people <laughs> love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure anyone's had a better loss in the UFC than when he lost to Yves Loyev. Seriously. Exactly. It like was exactly. such a good fight. He he he, he caught him almost in that submission. Yeah. Man. He looked really good. No, man. he he he's great. And he has a star potential, like Maddie is saying. Uh so so that's why he's in UFC 300. Uh and, and I like Sodik too. Mm -hmm. But as a star potential, they making the fight to to Diego Lopes for sure. It's just a tough guy to to make a good fight. That's my opinion. Hmm. Yeah. I think Diego Lopes will beat Sodik. I agree. What do, what do you I gotta ask you because we we talked uh with Gilbert about this a couple episodes back. Uh but Charles Oliveira versus Armin Sarukian. What do you think about that? You one? know, listening to Gilbert talk about how big of a star Oliveira is in Brazil. Yeah. Hearing Gilbert say that <clears throat> was pretty interesting for me because I I imagine Gilbert gets recognized here and there when he's back in his homeland. Gilbert's a big star here too. Yeah. I really can't ever bet against Charles Oliveira. It's that simple for me. What's the line? Yeah, I think he's a small dog right now. Is he? Yeah. I mean, I, I the, the, the hype is real with Sarah Gyan, but I, uh, Charlie Olives all day for me. Um, you know, I think for me with, with Oliveira, it's, there's so many different ways he can get it done um, that I just ultimately, and a little plus money, we'll take it. Bro, I think he, yeah. So right now he, so he opened, ready for this? He opened as a minus 120 favorite. Yeah. He is now plus 175. Charles Oliveira. Charles Oliveira. He opened at minus and now he's plus. He opened as a small favorite. He's now, they're saying the closing range could even end with him as a two to one dog. I don't know what I'm missing what here. What am I missing? I don't know, but I think he finds Sarukian's chin. I think it's a knockout. I don't think it's a submission or just, I think it's a knockout. I think that's his best, best path to victory there. But I don't know. I think odds makers are looking at it of like, look what Islam did to him as far as like the wrestling and the control. I mean, he heard him on the feet first, but like, I'm wondering if they're looking at it in that regard of like Sarukian is cut from that same cloth. Mm -hmm. He can do that as well. Because Oliveira's wrestling, I think, is his one area where it's his one weak component, like weaker component. Like his striking, I think, is the most underrated striking in the UFC just because his jiu-jitsu is so good that it makes his striking underrated. But look what Justin Gagey said about him when when he when he got the club and sub on him. Like he said his like his jaw was like like raining or something. I forget what he said. But yeah. He hits hard. He's, I think, I think Oliveira knocks him out. I really do. Well, I do. And it's interesting. You talk about that line, right? And so I, you know, I've, I don't know if the line has been released with Marab and O'Malley, but I think some people thought Marab would be favored. And that surprised me maybe in a similar way with this matchup. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So Marab was a near two to one favorite. I don't think it's going to close around that. Yeah. But yeah, odds makers had Marab as a significant favorite for the longest time. I used to say O'Malley does that is not a good fight for O'Malley. I have completely flip flopped. Hmm. I actually think the way Marab has gotten tagged in the Cejudo fight, the Marlon Marais fight, like I think that O'Malley's gonna find his chin. But he's gonna work on that too. Yeah. Right? Marab. Yep. Yep. For sure. For sure. Of and course. like his pressure, I don't know. That's a tough fight for Sean. I still think it's a tough fight. And I still think Sean has a lot to show in terms of his grappling and um being yeah. able to you know, defend takedown. So, I, yeah, dude, some of these guys are still getting better. L let me tell you something about Sarukian and Charles. Yeah. yeah, I know people are comparing him to Islam Makachev, but the size difference is huge. I was seeing him at the, the gym today, and he's small, hmm. even though he's good, good wrestler, good striking. I, I think he's small, I think he's small. And I don't know. But it's tough to bet against Charles because I have been betting against Charles for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> really. I really, I thought he would lose to to Benio Dariush. A lot of people did. I, did I didn't find any fighters that were picking Charles. That I one. was dead wrong on that one because I actually think Benio Dariush has overall the better jiu-jitsu. Grappling. Better grappling. And he showed it in that fight, but... He, he just does, again, that's why Oliveira's X factor is that his striking is actually really good. And he just found the, he, he just found his chin on the feet. Or was it a head kick or something? I think the, the, the what was a, a knee and a right. Yeah. But I think what makes Charles dangerous, dangerous is what makes him. It's his downfall too. It's his saying. downfall too. Yeah. He's too much, he's too aggressive, even on the bottle, the bottom. 
He's always trying submissions, always trying to scramble, and on the feet, always going to the pocket, trying to knock the guy down. Uh, so so, so it, it's tough. I, I, I think Charles will beat Sarukian, but at the same time, it's a tough fight. Yeah, I can see Sarukian having like a 10-8 round one, and then Charles coming out in round two and knocking him out. <laughs> like, I could literally see that happen, and he's just got to survive that first five minutes. Yeah, like Chandler, right? Yeah. I can 100% see that. I still can't believe Chandler. Yeah, but Sarukian <laughs> is way better than Chandler. Yeah. I think so. You think his power I think is Chandler good? is very overrated. Really? That's my opinion. Do you think? But do you think Chandler is better striking than Sarukian? No. Really? No. Power? I think he's more powerful. Yeah. Okay. Knockout power. But he he's too... I don't know. He's too... Yeah, a little rigid. I, I hear rigid, you. Rigid, yeah. <clears throat> exactly, rigid. How, you know, it's amazing, though, the star power. You know, we talk a lot about these stars. Michael Chandler, what a massive star. He's one of those guys. doesn't matter if he wins or loses, right? Yeah. It feels like it just yeah. doesn't matter. Just big fight after big fight. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Because right. he don't have the best fight IQ, too. <laughs> I, I, no, it's true. It's, it's literally truth. the difference between him being a champ and not. Or right? Yeah. You know, like... feels like it. It's... It really is crazy. Just going maybe back. it's not because the IQ. Maybe it's because he wants to impress the public. Yeah, That's 100%. what I feel. He loves the, the 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 fans, and he wants to to yeah. do a show, right? I mean, it's more of a this. You're right. It's more of a choice for him. Like the Justin Gagey fight, he puts his hands down and just walks forward. Yeah. And says, hey, <laughs> right. bro. Like, like he just all he cares about is entertaining, <laughs> entertaining yeah. the audience. But yeah. at some point, you have to you have to win, though. Like, yeah. Like, every how many fight he losses won, he has? He could have won every single fight in the UFC, or but he was this close to yeah. being undefeated in the UFC. Two and three in the UFC. His losses were Oliveira, um, Oliveira, Gagey, and Poirier. And no, no, it's right because he beat Dan Hooker and Ferguson right? and Tony Ferguson. Uh, Dan Hooker is easy. You gonna count that fight, <laughs> huh? Dan Hooker. <laughs> so, what, speaking of Dan Hooker, bro. Dan Hooker versus is Patty Pimblett. Is oh, that, yeah, was that announced? Is that real? Man, Dan Hooker got the the ticket, golden I, ticket. I don't wow. know. I don't yeah, know it's, if, it's, if it's, it's announced. I have it here in my notes. I think it's a it man. Patty be. Pimblett is fucked. He, 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 he's fighting Dan Hooker. Yeah, he's not winning I, that no. fight. Yeah, he's not beating Dan Hooker. What do you Two think of Patty? Two and three in UFC, exactly. What do you think of Patty Pimblett? Yeah, give give the camera your honest thoughts on Patty Pimblett. <laughs> I think he's a fighter. But a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I could, I could say he's not a fight. But he is a fight. You know? But I think uh, th that's not my opinion. Everybody knows he is overrated. Everybody knows he is protected by the UFC because he is a good product for the UFC, on, on, especially in Europe, right? And he got a lot of followers. But, but on the fighting game, and if you look at his skills, right? He didn't bet. He didn't beat uh, Jared Gordon. Gordon. Right, he lost. He, didn't, he lost um, to Jared. That's the truth. That's the truth. You I know? lost a lot of money so, on that. I was pissed. Oh, yeah, really. Yeah, I had Gordon. The, the odds were so mispriced. I had to take it. You know, I had to take Jared Gordon, and he was the right side. No when doubt. You get an underdog that's that close to winning and should have won. Yeah. You, all you have to do is chalk that loss up to the game, bro. That's all you can do. <laughs> like that's just how it is. <laughs> I was pissed on that fight. And so I, so that's my opinion on, on Paddy Pimblich. And I think they're going to have a hard time to protect him on this division. Yeah. You know, I think they're going to have a, a tough time. Imagining on the top 15, who do you guys honestly think Paddy Pimblich could beat on the top 15? Let me know in the comments, my brothers. Yeah, there you go. See? Remember the YouTube. Let me know in the comments. Well, but what do guy begin was talking shit to him, and he no, but we were cool. Oh, he was yeah, saying that's that right. we were cool. I hear you. We we were cool. You were talking to me, and everybody know this is a persona. Bobby Green is a persona. You know, he could be the best guy in the world, but when when he, he he's going to the face off, he will try to mess with you. And I think saying that like. What you doing? I don't think that's good. I don't think that puts you in the right uh, mindset for the fight. And I think he got he got caught. He got caught because, like you say, Bobby Green is not a big puncher. He's a guy that likes volume, right? Yeah. Good boxer, good take down defense. But but I, I don't know. I think he is. I think Grant Dawson. Man, let me tell you something about, about Grant Dawson. I think 
he he's going to be huge on the future if he can if he can learn with his mistakes and if if he can if he can uh, adapt his striking B because wrestling wise grappling wise i never see someone that got so so better in mm -hmm. the short amount of he come from 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 james Krause gym right yeah to att that's right and once he got there i was like dominating him finishing him all the time and now he's beating my ass on the, <laughs> on, the on the grappling right yeah it's very hard to control him he, ha he now he has a good cardio so i think if you are a grappler it's going to be a tough fight for him fight against Grindel. So if you want to grapple, that's going to be tough. I think he can beat every grappling, uh, not his line yet, you know, but every grappling on the top 15 that if he, he wants to. And he, he and Sarukian were training to, to the fight. So I watched that. I'm not going to talk too much about training, yeah. but what I can tell is Uh, Grand Dawson grappling, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, and cardio, it's going to get... Big. He just have to... I think he break this mindset of being a grappler and being an MMA fighter. Because you have to spar hard. You have to... Big gloves, uh, headgear. You have to spar boxers. You have to spar striker. Because his wrestling is great. His jiu-jitsu is great. Cardio. But I think he needs to improve his striking. Because... Like Islam Makachev, right? Even though he's one of the best grapplers, he's evolving. Yes, really Because no sometimes you're not going to get the guy down, you know, if he keeps the distance. Yeah. So to, to answer you, I think he has a, a good future in UFC, especially because he's so uh, committed to the game, to he's dedicated to what he does. And, and he's a great training partner overall, one of the best in ATT. Yeah. Paddy? Yeah. Free check, my brother. <laughs> 100% I'm willing to go to London and beat this kid in front of the king, my brother. You know? Uh, I, but I, I should not say that, right? I should say, hey, UFC, you need to pay me more money to fight him. And then, but no, I'm not playing this game. Really? But, but, but yes, I don't want to talk after that. And I tell you that many, many times. But, but thinking about Paddy Pimblich... It's a good fight. It's a fight that, that I would take. Alex Pereira is such a strange case in MMA, right? Yeah. yeah. Because I think he could, especially in 185, I think some of some fighters... Imagine in 185, they put him against Bo Nico. <laughs> I think Bo Nico could, could have beaten him in 185, right? <laughs> so why... He, <laughs> no. but, but, man, he, he, he had so many flaws... On his game mm -hmm. he, against Iri Pro Russia, do you remember the fight? He was pulling guillotines on Iri Pro Russia. Iri Pro Russia is not a grappler. <laughs> I don't even one. know if his name is right. <laughs> Pro Russia. <laughs> What's his name? Iri. Iri. Yeah. Yeah. Iri. Yeah. yeah. So so he was doing all the he was and even against Blaikovic, he was doing all the the bad the, the, the wrong stuff on the grappling, yeah. the wrong stuff on the cage. But he still are uh, finding ways to win, so yeah. it, it, it's very strange. And I f definitely think if Jamal Hill try takedowns and, and and grapple and grappling and cage fighting, but I think Jamal Hill will strike against him, and I think that's going to be bad. Yeah, I don't care too. I hear you. I hear you. I don't care. I hear you. you just take care of your business. business. It's business, you know. Yeah. I am so focused. That, that's why I don't. I don't get too worried about what I'm going to do next, what I'm going to do after the fight, because in the end of the day, everything... See how crazy is that? How f uh, Every fight on a fighter career is so important that can change your life. That that definitely... You, you guys remember Nate Diaz and Conor McGregor? That fight was not supposed to happen, right? And then, and then the guy blew, and now he's a fucking star. And now he's made, making... Tons. So, so I see UFC as an opportunity to change my life every time. And I, and I, and I know if I got over there, finished Jalen Turner, and got the mic and say something good on UFC 300, that can change my status on UFC. That can change my life. So I, I don't care too much about what I'm doing <laughs> right. after, you know? <laughs> This is so important to me that I want to stay focused on good the fight. You. But, but... Again, 
No, you, you put have it three. well. Yeah. Do you ever go into a fight thinking like, oh, this is what I'm gonna say on the mic after? Do you ever think through that, or is it just off the off the no, dome? It's not I th- it really depends on what I'm doing, yeah. right? So so now I am watching videos and I'm learning and even reading about Bitcoin. So that's what I have on my mind right now. So maybe <laughs> I will talk about that. Yeah. You know, it really depends on what I'm focused on, focused on because it's very hard to remember. Yeah. After the fight, you know, like last fight, I was fighting Drew Dub. He was trying to knock me out. I was trying to survive. <laughs> and then you have to remember what right. you, you know. No, you, I just have stuff <laughs> on my mind. And I and, and actually, I, would, I just say that because uh, I want to say congratulations to my father. It was my way to express, say, hey. Yeah. Is the way my my family is completely crazy. If you <laughs> if you went to a, a barbecue on my on my house yeah. and you see my uncles, people are crazy. So <laughs> when you say, "Hey, motherfucker, I love you," this is the, what they like. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was just trying to 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 express that, you know. For sure. So I don't know UFC three hundred. I don't know what I'm what I'm saying. But definitely, I will say something. Exactly. <laughs> you know there'll be a mic in his face. That's all you need to worry about. I can't wait for that moment. <laughs> That's going to be hype. All right. Final thoughts on USC 300 before we wrap up here. There's still so many fights on this car that we could talk about. But yeah, here, here. Seriously. Yeah, you guys can see. So here, I'll read, I'll read through the main event. Let's just do quick picks, all right? Just off the top of your head, gun to your head, who would you take? Are you making picks too, Matty? I will, but these aren't official betting picks. These are just oh, like, gotcha. These are I just gotcha. like who would I pick to win, right? Yeah. So let's start at the bottom. Davison Figueroa versus Cody Garbrandt. Davison. Davison. Davison for sure. Bobby Green versus knockout. I think the submission's live too, but I think finish for sure. Yeah. Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. Tough one. <sighs> really tough. Bobby Green. Jim fucking Miller. Jim fucking Miller. That's my dude. I love Jim Miller. I have a crazy story. I don't want to take too long, but I'll tell you about it later. But I had Jim Miller against Cowboy, and uh, it was the last leg of a parlay. And I had him by, you're going to clown me because you said, I just take the money. Like, <laughs> but I had Jim Miller by knockout against Cowboy to win 20000 and he submitted it. <laughs> I yeah. was so pissed at myself. Dude. All right, next up Jessica Andrade versus Marina Rodriguez. Marina Rodriguez. This is with my heart, man. Andrade's one of my favorite fighters. I just I root hard for, but she just too much activity. So probably Rodriguez. Yeah, Andrade is live early, but I'm going Marina Rodriguez. I think she's gonna outclass her. Jalen Turner versus Renato Moicano. Money all day. <laughs> that line's probably coming down already. Yeah, talk to the Jalen ca- Turner. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm waiting for the day that that a fighter is literally on the podium. And I will do that, that on FC 300. Yeah. Don't 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 put that shit on our, our, <laughs> our podcast. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. You can put that shit. On. <laughs> but if they ask me, no, Jolin Turner, of course, my brother. Yeah. No. <laughs> Money Moicano, live all dog, day. my brother, all day. Sadiq, you said first Diego Lopez. Lopez. Diego Lopez. Lopez. Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison. Kayla Harrison. Yeah, so you've seen her around, right? She's the top team here. And then, yeah, Kayla, she's look, looking lean to me uh, already. And I love lean? her she as looks, a human. She looks strong. Yeah, well, she always mm, looks strong but, strong. but she definitely looks as though the weight cut might not be, you know, that she might be fully capable of handling that. Dude, I love her. And what's Holly, what, 43? Yeah, I think Holly's done, man. K- Kayla Harrison's an easy one for me. I'm, I imagine she's a decent favorite. I'm excited to I see her I think not fight. that much. I think it's really? plus 300. I want to look at that real quick, Look, actually. Look at that real quick because... If I could bet, I would bet my house. On Kayla? On Kayla. But remember, I lost my house a couple of times in UFC. <laughs> <laughs> couple minus, times. Minus 300. So Kayla? You'd, you'd have yeah. To, you'd have to bet your house to win a car, basically. But that that's worth it, my brother. <laughs> because <laughs> you win. Depends on what kind of car, though, right? Depends on what kind of car. You'd have to bet your house to win, like, five or ten Bitcoin. Would you do that? Of course, my brother. Bitcoin is always good. I'm just upset that you're not calling it Bitcoin anymore. Bitcoin. Why'd you fix that? Is no, that I'm, not, I'm not trying to fix well, you Bitcoin. Get- <laughs> well, I don't even want to pick this one. This one kills me, man. So I'll say Calvin Cater from Boston. I'm from Boston, right? But I know Aljo better than I know Cater. I know Ray Longo real well. This one's in my heart. I have to abstain there, but I got to lean to the backpack. Aljamain Sterling. I've, I think Calvin Cater. 
And you, yeah, you were talking about Cater last week too. You faced Cater, right? I faced Cater yeah. a long time ago. Solid. Uh, do do you are you familiar with his career? Yeah. Ha having him been taken down. Yeah. So Calvin Cater, ninety one percent takedown defense. Yeah, exactly. Coming off of two straight losses though, Arnold Allen by knockout, Josh Emmett split decision. Then he lost. I think Max Hall that Max Holloway fight. He got hit four hundred forty five yeah. times. Yeah. So he's, he's durable. Good takedown defense, yeah. tall, you know. He, he's going to be a tough test for, especially on 45. He's a big 45. Yeah. Bro, you outstruck him 116 to 41 on the feet? Let's go. Was that, is that right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. At the time, I was afraid to shoot for takedowns. <laughs> bro, that's impressive, bro. That was in 2018. Yeah. I didn't even know that. That's awesome. Yeah. No, I, I think I'm taking Aljo. I just have a feeling that Aljo's going to benefit from going up in weight. I think he's going to be a big dude. I think he's going to be a big guy. Even if he doesn't get the takedowns, maybe he does get the backpack. Like yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Aljo's small. You know, he's got, I don't mean small, but he's short. He's yeah. got small hands, you know. So when I would listen to you last week, I perked my ears up a little bit thinking about Cater. But to me, he really I, watched the show, my brother. 100%. 100%. <laughs> and let me tell you something. I didn't fucking subscribe, and though. The, and this show is, is going great. Thank you for the having. Hey. Thank you for having me here. The course, great show. Bro. We appreciate you being on this, man. You're, it's your show, man. You're in the fucking yeah, one seat. Show me yeah, the money, bro. You're in it all day. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Gary Prochaska versus Rakic. Who do you like? Jesus, this fight card, man. I forget tough. about some of these. Yeah, tough, tough fight. Tough yeah. fight. Prochaska. Let me see Rakic. Bro, you know what's crazy is that one. The odds are. I want to say uh, Yuri's a dog. Really? Or if not, it's very close. I want to see this one real quick. But I'm going to go Yiri coming off the loss. Okay, so no, no. To Jim uh, Blaikovic. But, Maddie, you got so much still research, I would think, and different things, yeah. moving parts for yourself. Yiri's, You're not picking these fights a week out. No, no. Yiri's even money right now. I like I don't it. Know. Very close fight. Uh, Alexander Hachik, he used to train here in ATT a long time ago, 2018, yeah. 2019. And he's athletic. He's strong. He he good striker. I go with Rakitic just, yeah. just because uh, I don't know. He's going to be, I think, faster than Proracha. Than yeah. Yiri. Proracha? Prohaska. Pro Pro You're close. You got the Yiri. Yeah. Prohaska. Bo Nickel, Cody Brundage. Dude, what's the line? Is it just ah, heavy, huh? money, he's Bo Nickel on the favorite. fucking main event. Yeah. No yeah. ranking. Just fucking. You know what's what, the bro? money line? You know what's crazy, though, is... I think Bo Nickel's striking is way better than people give him credit. I, I agree was, with you. And jiu-jitsu too. Yeah, his, his submission And jiu-jitsu too. Yeah, because the Val Woodburn fight, it was short notice and everything. He was kind of in and out of his boxing and just started piecing him up. But if you go back, there was a fight a while back I had saw footage of recently, and Bo's striking on the feet looked so good. I can't remember which fight it was, um, but he looked really, really good in it. I don't know if... It was, I guess it was in the UFC, right? Because he didn't fight. Did he fight before the UFC? So, like, what holds you back from tying Bo Nickel to fucking parlays all night long? Is that just weak because, amateur so the, night? No, the way I look at it is you have to build a parlay with his money line in it and then take it out and then really ask yourself, is it even worth it? Because you put a guy that's, like, minus 1,500 in your parlay. Oh, is that really where we're at? I don't know. But okay, I, I got you. Uh, Bo Nickel's a minus Jeez. Oh. Yeah, so, like, if I have a parlay to win 10,000 with him in it, I probably take him out and the parlay still pays ninety five hundred. Right. And then I have to ask myself, is that really worth it? Uh, yeah. What happens if he injures yeah. himself? You know. I mean, bro, Cody. Like, what I, are we doing here? No, yeah. uh, he, I, I don't yeah. think he's good. You don't think Cody's good? Right. Right. So What's you know, his I'll tell, 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 tell you a story on, on Cody Brundage. So, I, uh, I Penny bet, five. I bet the Jacob Malkoon Cody Brundage fight. Right. I had a huge bet on Jacob Malkoon inside the distance, and then I had the round two, three finish. And he's destroying him late in the first round. Cody has nothing left. He then, you know, the DQ happens, and he says he can't go anymore. People can argue till they're blue in the face of whether he gave up or what, whatever happened, right? And Cody ended up winning by DQ. I lost a fortune. I made a, <laughs> I made a video on it. It was a bad beat video. And Brundage followed me the next day <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> I, I think he's a really likable guy. I like Cody Brundage. I think it's a really tough matchup for him. I think he has like two minutes to find a yeah, knockout. We, we talk about his skills, not his personality. For sure, or, for sure. You know, he's just a bad fight. Never get Don't get too personal, my brother. Don't get too personal. All right, moving on. Oliver versus Rukian. 
we talked about this, but one word answer. Oliveira. I'm not going to go against Oliveira. Yep. Oliveira. Gagey Holloway. Fuck. Gage. Yeah, man. I hate picking against Gage. these dudes, but Gagey. Got to. Gagey by the Gagey decision. Wei Lee versus Jan. So Daniel Cormier said Zhang Wei Lee might be like the best athlete he's ever seen. Man, woman, right? So, yeah. yeah. Zhang Wei Lee. I think Wei Lee is so good, man. Oh, God. I can't see her lose. I. I can't see. I don't even know the other girl, to be honest. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. she's yeah. good. She, she's coming off of that round one knockout where Andras was like marching forward with her chin in the air, and she just finished her in the first she round. She lost to Rodriguez and Sparsa. I'm going with Wei Li Zhang. Too. Yeah, Wei Li is, I think, on a different level than all these these this this entire division. The, the, the only fight that I remember, the the two fights that I remember was her against Joanna, right, <laughs> and her against the Brazilian girl that she destroyed. Oh yeah, was what's it, her name? Was Amanda Lemos? Yes, Amanda yeah, Lemos yeah. destroyed the girl. Yeah, she it was a beatdown. Yeah, uh, Amanda is tough, dude. Yeah, she I, I couldn't believe she didn't finish her. Yeah. She she got tough, 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 bro. One hundred and sixty three strikes she landed. The majority of those strikes were on the ground. Six takedowns to her zero. I mean that was a that was a crazy fight. But yeah, we're going uh, way Lee there. So main event, Pereira versus Hill. What's your official pick? Alex Pereira, left hook. Sweet dreams. Oh, fucking day. Let's go. <laughs> Maul Hill. Oh, I can't and even that's my it. heart a lot. But, dude, I'm telling you, I think he's got a great chance. I'll be I interested to see where he, you're at. He you. has a great chance. <laughs> yeah. He I, has. I'm going, as of today, I'm going Jamal Hill. Wow. I'm not, I'm not confident, though. Wow. I, I'm, I'm going Jamal Hill based off of the plus money here. He, he is a good under. I think I said last week on the card. And this is what people don't get about, don't understand about betting, but I would take either guy at plus money. I get yeah, it. Right. And you have to understand if a fight, if you think a fight is 50 50, it's just EV positive to take the plus money. And that's the way I look at this fight. So. I will say, and I, I hate to keep cutting you off, but I am surprised at this line. Even though I like Jamal Hill, I still would have expected Pereira to be two to one favorite or closer to that. Really? Yeah. But I think that just shows the respect for even Jamal Hill off the injury. That just shows that the odds makers know, like, look, this dude's dangerous. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing. People say there's no such thing as setting a trap in sports betting, but we all know it's pretty obvious that Pereira is going to get the betting. The, the bet in public is going to be on Alex Pereira. He's becoming a superstar. He's kind of the guy you want to bet on, right? When you're watching a fight, like he's the kickboxer. He's he he's beating Izzy. Like the bet in the general public is going to bet Pereira no matter who he's fighting. And then almost the fact that that's true and he's not two to one is what makes me think about it. And I'm like, okay. Like, the odds makers know something. Exactly, here, right? bro. It's the same with Volk and Topuria. That was too close. It was, oh, we get Volk at a pick him? Yeah, Not so yeah. fast. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I fell for that. <laughs> I'd say, Gilbert man, they are over here. Gilbert, Gilbert called it. You know, he, he said straight up, he's like, Topuria's winning that fight. What do you, we'll, we'll end with this. Do you want to see the Topuria versus Volk rematch, or do you think they should move on? No, I want Volk to just chill for a little bit, and yeah. I think they should move on. And I certainly, I don't think it's O'Malley. I think it's New Blood, whoever that. If it's Holloway coming out of this, yeah. whatever it may be, but not Volk. I agree. I think he needs some time off. What do you think? I think he needs some time off for yeah. sure. He did a lot for the sport. That show how it is hard to be on the fight business. This guy. One year ago was one of the greatest of all time, and now people are trashing him. So Crazy. that's why you don't, you don't, you don't have to care too much about what people think. Crazy. Otherwise, you're going to be what people think. That's a great way to end on right there, Money Morcano. Words of wisdom: Don't care what people think. <laughs> we will be back next week for episode three. Gilbert will be back. Hopefully, Morcano will be here for filming on a Sunday, which I, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to. We will see you guys next week. Moikano, tell them what they need to do. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you so much, Thank Maddie. You for coming. Great podcast. That's not that's not job. That's money. That's easy. <laughs> and what well, was a great show today. But uh, listen carefully, my brothers. If you if you got this far on the podcast, click the like button because that helped the algorithm to keep going. Algorithm is great. So let's keep the podcast going. Thank you so much. See you next week.